When you think about neuroscience, what comes to mind? Big MRI machines? An ice pick lobotomy? Medical doctors performing crazy experiments on a half-conscious patient with their brains exposed? I bet you're not thinking about the fruit fly, Drosophila melanogaster. Real neuroscience is often done in a much different way than what has become popular in movies and works of fiction. There is, in fact, a huge push to better understand biological processes by using smaller animal models. And when it comes to neuroscience, few models have been as fruitful as the fruit fly. Before I get into how the fly is being used to tackle advanced questions and problems that are under the umbrella of neuroscience, I want to take a minute to explain why flies make such a good animal model in the first place. Size is obviously a part of it. The fly's tiny size allows for many experiments to be carried out at a time. Its small size also allows researchers to maintain many fly lines while keeping costs down to a reasonable level. The fly also has its fast turnover, opening the door to genetic experiments, as it only takes the fly about 10 days to become a mature adult, ready for reproduction. It was these traits that enabled Thomas Hunt Morgan to win the Nobel Prize for Medicine, all the way back in 1933, for his research in genetics using the fruit fly. In fact, Morgan wasn't the only person to receive the Nobel Prize for research done largely in Drosophila. The prize was also awarded recently to a group of researchers for their role in discovering the molecular mechanisms which govern circadian rhythms. Fruit flies were an integral part of this discovery, as fly sleep mutants pointed the way to the circadian molecule, period. Period was originally discovered by the late Seymour Benzer, a neurogeneticist who pioneered the idea of using genetics to better understand organism behavior. In as early as the 1970s, Benzer and his student Ron Kanapka screened for mutant flies that have abnormal circadian rhythms and discovered three alleles of mutations which affect a particular gene. They named this gene, period. Almost a decade later, Jeffrey Hall, Michael Raspash, and Michael Young all individually cloned period and demonstrated that it controls circadian rhythms by building up in the cell's cytoplasm during the night and then breaking down during the day. Amazingly, they discovered that the protein actually inhibits its own transcription in a negative feedback loop. But how does period, which is synthesized in the cytoplasm, migrate to the nucleus to block its own transcription? This question was answered just a few years later by Michael Young, who discovered period's binding partner, Timeless. Timeless binds a period in the cytoplasm, allowing the pair to translocate into the nucleus, inhibiting transcription. Additionally, the timeless protein is broken down when exposed to light, so it only accumulates during the nighttime. It turns out that the circadian process is highly conserved and is almost identical to the one in humans. But the power of the fly doesn't stop there. The popularity of using the fly for genetic experiments has catapulted the unassuming insect to greatness. Drosophila's genome has been extensively sequenced and analyzed. There is now a huge library of fly lines representing knockout mutations and insertions. And what's more, many of these lines are publicly available through websites like flybase.org. This vast genetic catalog allows researchers to conduct all kinds of experiments so that we can better understand the inner workings of the brain. This is possible due to the remarkable similarities between the fly brain and our own. Even though we have been separated by millions of years of evolution, the neurons and channels themselves have been largely conserved. This is amazing because it gives researchers the power to study human proteins and cellular systems under controlled conditions, something that cannot be ethically done in humans. It is this unprecedented genetic control that has made the fly such a powerhouse in neuroscience. Flies have also been used to model pathways associated with neurological diseases. Neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's and ALS have been successfully modeled in the fly. Other diseases, like epilepsy, which can be caused by one of several ion channel mutations, have also been studied using Drosophila as a model. Flies have allowed scientists to gain insight into the mechanisms behind some of the most devastating diseases and are an integral part in finding cures. So whether it be disease modeling or circadian research, the fly has proven to be a top-notch partner in the quest to better understand the brain. It is for these reasons that fruit fly research is so important to the neuroscience community. So next time you leave your dirty dishes in the sink for a little too long, leading to a swarm of flies in your kitchen, remember, those little buggers have led to a wealth of knowledge when it comes to unlocking the inner workings of your brain.